Hi there. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for making it out so early. Um, I'll try to make this worth your time and be as interactive as I can possibly be in this. Um, please let me know if you can't totally view the slides um, and if there's anything we could do about uh, the light, that would be great. But otherwise, please just shout out if there's any uh, anything that, that is un, like that, that you don't understand on the slides. So I'm Alison, uh, and I run uh, Foresight Institute, which is a nonprofit that was founded in 1986, so um, before I was born, uh, to advance the beneficial development of high-impact science and tech. And so we have a few different focus tracks that we try to push um, beneficial technology development forward, um, and we do so via grants, prizes, fellowships, you name it. And so we were founded on the vision of molecular nanotechnology, which is the one up here. And so that's the idea of like really building uh, with increasing precision all the way to atomic precision and new materials, um, novel applications and devices. Um, biotech, here we focus mostly on longevity biotechnology. We have a big neurotech track that I will focus on a little bit more during the talk, mostly focus on BCI, whole brain emulations, um, with a focus on AI safety. Uh, a big computation track, which is mostly focused on secure human AI cooperation, a space track, and an existential hope track that wraps it all up under a banner of Fulleration Futures. So in each of these tracks, we have various different programs from uh, prizes, um, from grants, from seminars. So we meet on a monthly basis and like smaller Google groups um, for people to present their work and just create a little bit more of a collaboration layer. We have um, a, a, now in our seventh year, a really fantastic fellowship track. And many of our fellows are here today um, from the different uh, technology tracks. And then we host a bunch of kind of technical workshops throughout the year. And so the last one that we just did in, uh, some, in California um, in, uh, in Berkeley, actually, is on uh, Neurotech, BCI, and whole brain emulation for safe AI development. Um, and it was really fun. Uh, it was the, this one was like, I guess, double the size of the one that we did last year on this. Uh, and it's, I think, a pretty like rapidly emerging space. I think Juan pointed that out yesterday in his brief intro talk. Um, and I think it's the one that is like currently most exploding in terms of our ecosystem. But that's not really what I want to talk to you about today. Today I want to talk, like zoom out a bit and take it a little bit, perhaps like more on a meta note. Um, so we have been uh, kind of like using various different like innovation tools per different uh, technology category to really push um, fields forward. Um, but we also really want to think about like more meta level, like how, what can we do um, uh, really like to help people find each other, to help collaborations ensue and to help really like crowdsource and crowdfund uh, progress across our various different domains. And that's what I want to talk to you a bit about today. And I hope it has applications for your work as well. Um, so we have these different focus areas. People ask me all the time, okay, well, you know, I'm a new researcher entering the field. How can I make progress on biotech and health extension? I'm like, I'm not quite sure. I'm not the right person to ask. Uh, same for our other tracks. And so I think we really want to like give people a better understanding of each of these fields. We've had a long, long interest in this. This is from um, our 1999 Foresight gathering where Robin Hansen and a few others put like arguably one of the first, um, you know, like in-person prediction markets on the future uh, out there. And this one, uh, literally people voted by sending checks to our offices. So we had this like illegal gambling, um, um, illegal gambling studio going on for a while. And um, before my time, I should say, but people were really, really excited about like predicting more meta level, how technologies can make progress. Now, I think predictions are great, and I think we should be mapping uh, and tracking progress, but we also want to encourage it, right? And so that's where tech trees kind of come into the field. And so tech trees, who here knows, who here has played Civ, the game? Okay, cool. Well, then you guys know what a tech tree is. Um, so in Civ, the game, you have this kind of like tech tree to, mil um, to like map kind of like various stages of, your, uh, of the um, development of your civilization out. Then there's other various uh, thinkers that have thought similarly. Um, you know, there was Balaji who posted this thing on, well, what comes after the VC thesis statement and portfolio pages, the tech tree, a constantly updated open source map of everything um, you want to fund, how it interrelates and so forth. Uh, Trent McConaughey uh, took it out a little bit further and actually tried to build this kind of like tech tree for um, like civilizational flourishing all the way from here to reshaping the cosmos. And so like there was a bunch of kind of like interest growing in the tech tree space. We brought together a bunch of people that were interested in this, including Evan, who was back then at Protocol Labs, um, and like tried to do a hackathon to actually build a tool to map these areas because there really wasn't anything like it out there, uh, out there yet that could actually allow you to kind of like build uh, build these nodes out for various different technologies. 
Uh, so this, we hired uh, a bunch of our foresight fellows to actually build different tech trees across different domains of molecular machines, neurotech, secure AI, you have it. And this was the V1. I'll show you one of them. Um, this is the longevity tech tree that we had, I think produced like maybe a year and a half ago or two years ago. And so you can see it's like real clunky. You have in green all of the different uh, kind of like long-term goals within the radical life extension space. Um, and then you have like different nodes out there that explain to you like different progress that you should be making. Um, then uh, they have a little pop-up window that you can't quite see very well yet, but it lists you different labs, conferences, fun, um, funding sources in these areas. And then some people went to town and like really built out specific nodes that they are really interested in. Um, and so there's a lot more to discover. But you can tell that this tool is like really difficult to use, um, not very smooth. And so we're like, well, can we do better? Luckily, um, we didn't have to because um, Martin and the coordination network came along. So this is a new tool that we've had access to now for, yeah, I guess um, about half a year, maybe a little longer. And it's an AI-enabled tech tree. So it allows you through an AI interface to build and also access these tech trees. Um, and so this one is one that we built using this tool in the longevity space. And the cool thing is um, you can immediately see it's a lot easier to process. So it looks a little, like it looks a lot slicker. Uh, it's just like much easier from the user interface. Oh, you can't see it at all, can you? Um, okay, so basically here we have the different, this is the tag team. We have different nodes in different colors. The black ones are technologies, the orange ones are kind of like core challenges that we need to make progress on. The green ones are long-term goals, and then the blue ones are positive outcomes that are kind of like, like you know, collateral advantages. So then you can start really like mapping an entire ecosystem, such as, for example, here, removing aging damage, and you can like follow this tech tree where you can't quite see the lines here, but I promise you there's various lines that are connecting the trees, um, and you can kind of follow it along, along a, a specific given path. Um, and the cool thing is also like each of the different nodes, of course, are clickable. So every one of them opens up into an explanation of that node, uh, companies, labs, funders in that ecosystem so that people can much easier like find out, okay, I want to make progress on uh, gene therapy. What are the main labs I could be joining? What are the main uh, funding sources I can be applying for and so forth? The nice thing is also that it has an AI chatbot interface. So if you're, uh, let's say, you know, to lazy to actually move through an entire tech tree. You can ask uh, the tool, what is the difference between Shift Bio and Altos Labs, let's say from an investment perspective. You ask the tool and it tells you uh, a lot more. Um, it's ChatGPT GPT, Chat 4 integration and it tells you a lot more about that specific node. Uh, so here from a funder perspective, for example, it compares two companies for you. But you could, all, you could also ask, how can I join the specific lab? What is an undervalued area I should be focusing on? Uh, and so forth. So it's like, it's a really nice way to allow people to have like different paths through the tree, um, depending on their um, level of interest and on their level of expertise. Uh, so that's been really wonderful to see. I don't know who here knows Neil Stevenson, young ladies, Illustrated Primer, Diamond Age, anyone? So in Diamond Age, it's basically this like, um, this young lady has this really interactive roadmap that takes her through the world and explains to her all the various different technologi uh, technologies that she's encountering. Uh, and it really like takes her by the hand based on her level of expertise. So I think that's really like the, a, a current goal of these tech trees of just like taking people by the hand and showing them different areas where they can help make progress. Now, that was V2. Um, I think we really wanna like not just build one technological area, but we wanna build more than one, right? So eventually we have, want to have, have built more of a forest of different technology trees by opening up the tech trees that we have for crowdsourcing, by building a lot more trees, and by eventually like forking and connecting trees across different technologies. So here's another one that Matthias will talk a little bit more about in a second, so I'm not really going to go into it in, uh, in any detail. Um, but this one is um, a really interesting one that we've mostly done to like map the space of uh, security and secure AI cooperation. Um, which is like a funding focus area of ours. And the idea here is that you have like various different nodes. Again, you can see where you can make progress on and he'll tell you a lot more about that one. Uh, but the idea is that you should be doing this for like all of the different areas. This one here is currently in progress. Uh, it's on our BCI, whole brain emulation uh, and AI track. 
And this one is actually like me just literally trying to figure out, okay, what was discussed at our last workshop, uh, the one that we had two weeks ago. So this is done by me, very, um, you know, like uh, kind of like MVP-like, but different folks have pointed out uh, through these various different workshops um, uh, and, and through the prizes and grants that we've been giving them, like roughly like a path of how you could actually use various newer technologies to help uh, with safe AI development. And so you have fields here like uh, brain, like um, AGI, which is a, a field that is developed by Steve Burns that um, Adam mentioned yesterday. You want to maybe have neuroscience, um, of course, sociality for uh, AI alignment. Um, you want maybe to have assistance for AI alignment, merging with AGI systems, enhancing humans to be competitive with AGI, uh, or just increasing the speed of alignment work. And so for each and every one of them, there's like different nodes of how you could be doing this. Um, linked back to it, uh, including various different uh, technologies that um, people are currently making progress on. And then in orange, again, you have the open challenges here. They're all connecting with various, uh, with various nodes, that, uh, with, with different graphs that, um, that are not super visible here. But um, one, one thing that I want to just focus on like for a brief second is we are like, quite focused currently in our um, support in that space on the field of mobile emulation. And so one really interesting, I think, development that has come along is like, I think those of you who went uh, to the speaker gathering yesterday, Juan showed this roadmap um, from Anders Sandberg from, I think, 2008, where Bostrom and Sandberg basically published like a roadmap for like a normal traditional, traditional whole brain emulation path. And the timelines on that are really quite long. And so uh, in the last year, like through the Foresight ecosystem, you hear a lot more about that from Catalin later in his talk. And there's been this other technological kind of strand coming online that's quite new. And this is like a lo-fi approach to whole brain emulations. So if a hi-fi approach is actually like mapping an entire connectome and actually trying to simulate that forward, a lo-fi approach would be like, well, can we do that simpler given that AI timelines are quite short? Is it possible to use um, that coarse grain neural recording together with really accurate behavior recordings in multimodal machine learning? Uh, to actually build something that is like a lo-fi upload um, of a model organism and eventually possibly a human. And can we use that to have better feedback um, and signals for AI alignment? So I think this is a really interesting space. And I think mapping these bi different bits out and tracking who's doing work on which area um, is, is a really useful concept, especially for new emerging ecosystems that don't really have a community yet, where it's important for people to find each other quickly and easily. So those are kind of like all up and running and they're kind of being um, currently all under, uh, under development, under construction. And I think this is a little bit like the long-term goal. And again, you can't really see the arrows pointing in the right directions, but these are like, basically if you, I showed you our different focus areas earlier, you can map them on a tech tree and then you can draw dependencies between them. And so for us, the cryptography security and AI tree comes really early on because it kind of like either leads to something like AGI rune or has the benefit of like actually accelerating research and a variety of different fields. Um, then we have our various other different nodes like the longevity biotech tree, um, you know, um, there's a really big risk of bio risk over here, but it could also uh, link to longevity, escape velocity, cryonics and so forth. And then it links out to uh, beautiful features that um, I've grabbed from different sci-fi novels that describe this future well, where we want to go to. So for longevity biotech, you have something like Fable of the Dragon Tyrant from um, Nick Bostrom. For Chronics, you have something like San Junipero. Who knows San Junipero? Really great Netflix. Um, like the only white mirror one in all the Black Mirror uh, episodes. Um, you obviously have the risk path here as well, but you can do the same for neurotech and BCI. Um, we may have something like suffering risks and mind, mind crime, but we may also get to something like ubiquitous mental health or brain emulations and BCI AI interfaces, which could lead to us to like Deep Utopia. Has anyone read Deep Utopia yet from Bostrom? Okay, it just came out. Uh, then there's uh, lo much longer ago, The Hedonistic Imperative from David Pierce. So you can kind of like start tracking kind of progress towards these sci-fi futures in various different domains. And ide like ideally the idea is that by double clicking on each of these tech trees, you get directed to the longevity tech tree that goes into a lot more depth into that specific field that I showed you, or into the newer tech BCI tech trees. So the idea is that you can zoom in and out as you please to make progress on various different goals. So if that works out, that's, kind of nice already, but now I think we want to take it a step further. So this talk is mostly about like different funding mechanisms for actually advancing progress. So it's great if we have a good path of where we want to go, but without actually like having a way to incentivize progress, it's a pretty static map uh, and not really quite interesting. So how can we actually like accelerate progress along these tracks? So there's various different um, uh, kind of like tools, I guess, from fellowships, prizes to grants. So on the fellowship domain, for example, 
in the longevity biotech tree, um, the Longevity Biotech Fellowship that we're collab collaborating with a lot is like a fantastic fellowship in that uh, that covers like pretty much the entire tree for us. They have their own roadmap, but we use that roadmap to also build into the tree. And so you can start mapping fellows and fellowships to the tree and like actually support people in the areas that you want to make progress on as an organization or as an entire ecosystem. The same holds true for our foresight fellowship in the cryptography and security tree and the BCI and whole brain relation tree. We really source for fellows that are making progress on challenges and on nodes that we think are really important and need to be further developed. Um, another one is prizes. So prizes are really great if you're not really quite sure how to solve a specific area yet and you want to draw more attention to it and get more people involved and encourage experimentation. So on the longevity biotech tree, uh, we've collaborated with uh, Lifespan.io, Methuselah Foundation, Vita Dao, um, uh, the X Prize on like building the longevity prize, which is mostly about like new hypothesis for making progress in the longevity biotech space. Uh, you get, I think the last prize was you get 20K for the best one pager that proposes you a new hypothesis in the longevity space, and we can then map that back onto the tree. So you can really incentivize people to like actually make progress where, where, where it should be occurring. In the cryptography, security, and AI tree, uh, we've collaborated with Protocol Labs and Agoric um, to fund a Norm Hardy Prize for usable computer security. So one really big problem in the secure AI space is that we don't really have good security, and even if we did, um, it's really, really not usable. You pay often a very high cost um, for making for using an app securely or using any uh, system securely. And so we really try to encourage usability in computer security, um, and, and that maps again back onto the tree. Um, for the whole brain emulation and BCI tech tree, we're about to launch a $1 million lo-fi emulation prize. That kind of came out of the last two workshops, and it maps again on the lo-fi node onto the tech tree. And the idea here is that, you know, can we actually like encourage a bit more work on this like newly emergent kind of like space within the newer tech and for AI kind of ecosystem uh, by having this $1 million prize uh, focus on a mouse brain. And it's going to be launching in about um, one or two weeks. We're still like hashing out some details, but you can start mapping prizes onto the tree. So that's really exciting. Uh, and then finally, the one that I want to spend maybe a little bit more time on is uh, grants. Grants are really, really useful, um, especially for encouraging um, folks to like really like hone in on an area that they would otherwise not be incentivized to through their university company or whatever. Um, there's, we're taking a lot of inspiration here from the Impetus Grants, which I'm sure many of you know. Um, so Lada, um, uh, Martin, and a few others like launched uh, together with the help of like you know various donors, including uh, Molly, Juan, and a few others, um, this longevity fast grants round ca uh, called Impetus Grants. And they've been fantastic in funding a lot of work in the longevity space really fast. They were like absolutely game changer for the space. And it's been like really, really, really rewarding to see how much the longevity space exploded uh, since Impetus Grants have been around. Uh, so thank you guys at Impetus Grants for doing this. Um, we have launched our own kind of like grants program in the cryptography, security, and AI space. Um, and here we really focus on um, security for AI and cryptography for AI. And that's been running for about, well, I guess seven months now. And so we we give out $1.5 million per year for people working in that area. Um, and uh, we're trying to do it as fast as possible with a turnaround round of about eight weeks and a very easy application form inspired partly by Impetus Grants. Now, this is the one that I think gets really interesting. This is the one that is currently under construction. And so for the BCI whole brain emulation and AI tech tree, which is like, you know, quite a new field for us. Like it really only existed for us for the last two years that we've been really trying to focus on this. Uh, we're currently trying to uh, get off the ground a program on whole brain emulation fast grants. And so this includes both lo-fi and hi-fi approaches. And the idea is that like over the past two years, there has been there have been so many different product proposals from workshops, from various people that have like found us um, through, uh, through um, actually having a seminar group in this, but there's really no funder in the whole ventilation space, let alone in the whole ventilation for AI safety space, because it really wasn't a really good pathway until not too long ago when AI progress made many of this stuff um, much, much easier. And so currently we're in the process of uh, launching a whole ventilation fast grants round. Um, we have about, uh, I think, 7.5 million raised for this. And so if you're interested in like, helping us um, actually like increase the, um, the, the size of the, the grant, please, please talk to me. Many of the projects that, um, that we have are like, you know, in the few hundred K to a few million space, depending on the maturity. And it, it, it takes some funding to get it off the ground, but I think the progress that we can be making there uh, is to me, I think, currently the most undervalued of our entire tech stack. So if you're interested in this, um, please, please go talk to me. Uh, I'd be really delighted. And if you're interested in applying to this once it's launched, I also want to um, uh, want to point this out to you. So you can have like various different tools to make progress on this tree. 
Um, I think the idea is that ultimately, and again, you can't see it quite that well, but everything that is like a little blossoming flower here are various fellowships, prizes, and grants. So that instead of just mapping an entire space, you can actually seed these spaces and actually help encourage research across the uh, like tech tree forest, uh, if you will. Later on integrations, hopefully one day, we'll also get some impact tracking going. Um, we're currently discussing possibly using hypercerts and for actually tracking impact across the tree. Um, we already have some manifold integrations into the tree where people have started predicting uh, on different areas in the tree. So um, I think there's a lot we can be doing with this, especially if it's interoperable, and this is uh, really built by the coordination network to be as interoperable as possible. Um, if you're interested in this, um, if you wanna uh, start building uh, more of this ecosystem out um, from like a more technical perspective, um, then it's the coordination network that you should be going to. They have been building the tree uh, that I just showed you. Um, well, they've been building the infrastructure for, to allow us to build the tree. And you can use it for various other kind of like argument gathering and AI enabled um, uh, kind of like evidence sourcing and so forth as well. And if you're interested in building like very specific technology trees, or if you're a researcher, you know, wanting access to this tool to figure out where to make uh, progress on, please, please uh, find me. We are definitely trying to build more of these trees and connecting them uh, on the long run. And finally, if you're interested in like actually like piloting one of these ecosystems by like launching a larger um, whole brain innovation fast grants round in the BCI new tech tree, also please talk to me. Uh, I think that it's really interesting to just like you know have this API that easily maps various different technologies and to be able to go out there, fund there, collaborate with each other to actually help drive progress, uh, and then kind of come together and like look at the entire map and see how fast progress is occurring. So if you're interested in any of this, uh, please go talk to me. My email is out here. Uh, I'm on Twitter, uh, on X and Telegram at Alison Deman. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions uh, that you'd like or walk you through some tree in detail uh, or whatever you may be interested in. Uh, and I'm happy to share any of the slides or something with you guys if you actually want to see the tree or like uh, interact with the tree um, or something if it wasn't very visible uh, here on the screen. Um, all right, well, this is my talk. Thank you so much. Thank you.